Hey and welcome to another tutorial. Today I will show you how to create this impossible shape inside Microsoft PowerPoint. It's sometimes called the impossible trident or blivet or devil's fork. There are a lot of different names and information on Wikipedia. What's important here is it's impossible because it's kind of uh, made from two different 3D shapes. If you take a look at the right side, it's like the extruded U shape with two extruded parts, but it goes into three extruded uh, circles on the left side so it's not kind of matching seems like you know it's connected but it is not so if you haven't seen my previous tutorial about the creating impossible shape in microsoft powerpoint i would strongly recommend you to do so because it has some important details so with that in mind let's jump into the blank presentation and start drawing something so the problem as usual as is for previous tutorial and is for this one is we have to somehow make sure that the top part this this one is the same size as the extruded part and the problem here is if you draw a shape any shape like a rectangle i will open the size and position properties it's inside uh, it's in centimeters or inches depending on your units but once you start to extruding something and you open the free format you will notice that the depth is not in centimeters not in inches it's actually in points so you have to somehow make sure that those points matches the centimeters and previously I was just using Google search to search for the conversion between those two units. I will do this in a little bit different way now and that is actually using macro but don't be scared. It will be the simplest possible one line macro. So I'll open the developer ribbon macros and for this presentation I will just uh, create a new macro called draw shapes like this. I will hit create and I have this uh, visual basic for application window where I can type in the macro so i'll type in active uh, presentation that uh, slides and sorry slides and for the first slide i want for the sh shapes i want to add shape and i want to draw mso shape uh, rectangle of course on the position i don't know maybe 10 and 10 and the size will be 50 and 50 for example i will type in dot select if I run this macro, it will draw me a new shape, a new rectangle, and I know that this rectangle has the si uh, size of 50 by 50 points. This is important for me because I can open the format shape um, properties, and in the free format I will set the free rotation to any rotation for now. But if I change the depth to 50 points, I know that the sides are the same size as the top part. Okay, so, but one rectangle, that's not enough. I need more rectangles. So I will just copy this line and I'll probably copy this uh, three times or so. And uh, for each rectangle, I will change the Y position just so it's aligned next to each other. So uh, 10 plus 50 is of course 60 and 60 plus 50 is of course 110. So if I run this, I should get three shapes which are exactly close to each other in the size each is size 50 by 50 so i will i will select the first one and the, and the last one resize it to the left side select all of them in the former but i'll select merge shapes union so i have this u shape which i can try to extrude so i will try to extrude it i will open the shape effects free rotation and select one of those uh, isometric views so most likely this top up view and i will set the depth to 50 points so i'll open this and set it to 50 points now if I take a closer look at the, what we are looking for, we need to have like six, uh, six lines, if I can call it that way. So in here I want to have six lines, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So those six lines are used for those circles on the left side. If I take a closer look at this shape, I only have one, two, three, four, five. That's because the gap is, you know, of course, covered by the extrusion. So not only I need three shapes, I actually need four different shapes. So I just have six lines. So 110 plus 50 is 160. I will run this one more time. I will select the, you know, all of them, move them to the right side. Then I will select just the first one and the last one. Resize it to the left side, maybe like this and merge everything together. It's probably not that much needed, but it's it's better to just merge it together. Now, what I can do is I can select this shape and in the home ribbon, I will select the this, this one, which is the format painter. I will just click on this shape and I should get the uh, right properties for extrusion. So as you can see, I have one, two, three, five, four, six different lines. So it should be very e fairly easy for me to somehow try to align the, you know, the circles. Before I do so, I will probably 
change the color M maybe not maybe i'll leave the color to the end maybe i'll you know stick to blue color for now so let's actually try to draw you know draw the circle i will again jump to my uh, macros so developer macro i will open my macro edit the macro i will comment this out because i don't need to draw well, the rectangles i may need it in the future so i'll just leave it there i will copy one of those lines and instead of adding the mso shape rectangle i will add uh, oval so mso shape oval that one and i can draw it on the very same position as the first one so if i run this i'm getting the oval which is which has the size or the uh, diameter of 50 points i cannot just copy this uh, style because if i do so i can show you if i do so in, it's extruded to the wrong, di wrong direction so i have to select a different preset for the extrusion so it should be this left one this one and i will probably you know raise the depth to much higher number maybe like 200 uh, 200 sorry okay so if i move it closer to the shape you can see it's kind of not matching the top part it's not matching both parts that's because the oval is of course not filling the same shape as the rectangle so i can quickly draw it for you so we have the we have the rectangle oh sorry maybe the square it's a better name for this shape so we have a square which is being extruded like this and then we have an oval a circle which is being extruded only like this so as you can see the extrusion is a little bit smaller this is the this is the d or two times r which is the diameter and the side of the side of the square but for the square extrusion for the this size we actually need a diameter of the square so we have to calculate the diameter it's very easy if i just type in square diameter equation it gives me this picture which means that this diameter is uh, the side length times uh, square root of 2 so i can try to use this equation for the size so i will add a new variable which i will call um, i don't know circle size equals the size of the uh, side of the square which is 50 times square root of 2 and i will use this circle size in here instead of 50 i will use this value so if i run this and i copy this extrusion for this one you can see that now what we are getting is the size which is in you know basically connecting three three lines together which is nice but you know we only get two different uh, sides which is you know it's kind of blending between those shapes but it's not it's not an impossible shape we need to have the circle in the smaller size actually in the half size so what i will do is i will say that the circle size is this one divided by two i will run this again i will copy the properties or the style and now what i'm getting is what i'm looking for so this is just filling the one side i can copy paste it in here and the last one would be around here and i'm just you know eyeballing it right now because i will use a better approach in a minute but as for now you can see that we have the left shapes and the right shapes we just need to make sure that the left shapes on the, are on the very right positions and the right shape is somehow blending into those three shapes so what i will do now is i will actually uncomment this one so i have the those rectangles which i will use for alignment and i will actually run everything then i will okay i need i probably need to have those in a different way i need to have those going from left to right so i will not change the y but i will change the x position 110 160 Okay, just the y will be 10 for all the shapes so i will delete this one run this one more time and now i have uh, those like four uh, uh, squares and one uh, circle so i'll try to copy this circle and you may be thinking that maybe if i just you know copy paste it like this not quite sure if it's visible on the video i'll change the fill color if i just you know try to somehow distribute it over those four squares and then you know simply i don't know maybe union those and use the free rotation that it will it will work just fine it's actually not the case and i will show you in a minute so if i increase the depth to maybe like 200 you can see it's not quite matching what i have to do is i have to position those circles in a different way and the different way is that i have to wait a minute don't bear with me 
move the circle to be on the half of the size aligned with the left one, the right way on the right one, like this, and the middle should be of course in the middle. So this should be fine for, for positioning. So I will again maybe union those into one shape and then I will just use this uh, 3D rotation and use the format painter for those three. Okay, seems like everything is working. So I will get rid of most of the shapes and maybe move it uh, in the middle of the, of the slide. And I can start playing with the color and actually blending those shapes together. So I will start with the with the U shape, which I will uh, bring to front. And for the fill, I will use a gradient fill. And the trick here is to make the gradient which blends into the, the fully transparent color. So maybe this one stuff will be red. I believe I've used like a darker red uh, and uh, you know, light red colors for what I was doing previously. And I will move it closer to each other so I can see that if I change this to zero degrees, it's actually the direction which I'm looking for. So I will distribute, distribute it over the gradient and for the le very left stop I will use the red color, but I will raise the transparency all the way up to 100%. I will also change the line to no line and suddenly we will see that it's somehow blending into, into the second 3D shape. So like this. Now I can play with the free settings and uh, all the stuff, but uh, for now let's focus on those three uh, circles on the left side. I will also set the no line and I will set the fill to be red one. I will probably go with some 3D settings and free lighting settings, which is not that harsh. So something more smooth, I'm not quite sure, maybe something like soft may work better. Okay, and I will raise the depth to much higher number, maybe 350. So now as you can see, it's kind of blending those two together. I can you know, play with the bevel settings. I can maybe add a little bit of bevel in here. Maybe I can add a little bit of bevel for the 3D shape, make it smaller. So we have a hint of 3D shape. So the only thing missing is that the middle circle is kind of directly connected with the middle part of the 3D U shape. What I can do is I can insert a new freeform shape, which I will draw like this, connect it, and I will use the gradient fill. But this time the gradient fill will go from you know white to fully transparent white color. So white to white, this one will be fully transparent, and I will rotate it just so it goes from top right corner like this. If I move those closer together, I can see the angle much better. So 300 is looks fine. Then I will spread it out like this. I will set the line to no line, open the selection pane. So open the selection pane and make sure that this, this overlaying gradient shape is in between those shapes. So it's fading the, in, the, in the middle circle. Of course, I can move it all the way to the left side like this. So it's, it's really fading much more like this. Okay, and that's almost it for the for the impossible trident and the devil's fork. If I compare it to my previous creation and I get rid of those you know, drawings, probably the, the only difference, you know, I was maybe using a little bit different gradient and a little bit different lighting styles, but there is also this drop shadow. For this one, I cannot just simply use a default drop shadow because I will just get a drop shadow for those three circles. I can quickly show you if I right click and select the format shape and add a new drop shadow effect it will just give me those free circles. It will not give me the extruded part. It's somewhere in, on the right side, you can see it. So only only the free circles, which is not enough, of course. I need those extruded shapes. So instead of using a default, you know, drop shadow effect, I can select everything. Actually, I will insert a new shape, which will just serve me as the, as the borders of our image. I will set no fill and no outline. I will select all three shapes, copy that into clipboard and paste this as an image. So now this is this is the image and I can do a few things with the image. I can open the format picture properties and for the artistic effects I can open the blur effect and blur it a little bit. I don't know, maybe like 30 points or so. 
then I can open the color properties and maybe maybe make it a little bit uh, darker or maybe the corrections make it a little bit darker like this move it below the main shape send this to back so send to back and fade it a little bit so fading could be done by drawing sorry drawing a new rectangle for which I will set white color and in the selection pane I will move this in between the like the fake drop shadow and our shapes and then using the transparency I will blend between no shadow and full shadow so maybe something like this should be fine of course I can still play with the position of the shadow and that's probably it that's how you create the impossible trident or devil's fork whatever you call it this impossible shape inside Microsoft PowerPoint thanks for watching